Hi, it's Belinda, Aussie Stitcher, coming to you on this Sunday, the 7th of April, 2024. How is everyone going? Um, hope everyone had a good March. Mine was meh, not horrible, busy, um, had some great points, and yeah, some really good stitching. Even though I had nine known stitching days, I still did a lot of stitches, so I'm pretty happy with that. Um, thank you for all my new likes and followers and etc. Um, considering my last video was ridiculously long. We're going to kind of follow the same format, as in I'm going to do a life update first, because that works well for me. So fast forward, I don't know, a good five minutes, maybe a bit more, and um, to get to the stitching, if you're not interested in a life update. So basically, um, we had no rain in March, I'm pretty sure. Um, and we don't look like we're going to get rain. I don't know. I talk about the weather a lot. If you're new, sorry, we're farmers. Rain is up there. Um, not until next month, they were forecasting. So, and it's not horrible. Um, it is what it is. We often don't get a lot of rain in April. Um, thinking. So, I am going to put in, and that, that sounded really bad, so scratch that, start again. Um, my daughter Michaela, um, her godfather was down and he owns a plane. We used to work for these people and they own a station up near Carnarvon. And he was down dealing with some sheep and offered to take Michaela and all of us, but only Michaela ended up going for a ride in his plane. So I am going to put in here, when I'm finished talking this little bit, a video of um, Michaela and if for whatever reason it doesn't go in here I will take this on the end um, a video of our farm so it's about it's 52 seconds long the first bit as it's flying like you see it that's not our farm you'll see a bitumen road and then you'll see a paddock in our house so from the bitumen road up to around the house from memory all of what they, he shows you is our farm. Um, babe, ma maybe not like if there's if, if he spans out into the distance, but just to give you an idea, that's roughly. So you'll see a house, roof, sheds, and I thought I'll put that in and give you guys just an idea of what it looks like. And it looks dry, <laughs> but um, yeah, it was really cool. She loved it. They had. Um, she took a lot of different videos, um, some of it of their farm, her godfather's farm, some of it of, um, we have like a CBH um, just down from us and they took a video of, like of, over the head of that. So it was really cool. She had a great time, um, saw some amazing things. I'll, I'll put that in here. Um, my husband and I also went away to Kalbarri for a weekend. We had someone look after the kids and we went away and it was really great. We don't often, I think the last time that just the two of us went away was about five years ago. So it was really great. I'll insert a couple of photos of Calvary. Um, where we stayed, they had kangaroos there and they were super, super friendly. You could almost pat them, they were that friendly. Um, I wouldn't recommend it because they're still wild creatures, but they were very used to having people around them. So super friendly. So were the flies and the flies even around here at the moment are super friendly. You walk outside and 50 of your favorite and friendliest flies are in your face. It's not fun, but the weather is a lot cooler. We're in the thirties instead of like forties um, Celsius. So weather is a lot better. What else? Um, I'm just going to put in some random photos of some sunsets and um, just general some photos that I've taken. I've been trying to go for walks quite a bit and enjoying them, except for when 50 of my closest family of friendly flies are with me. I've been really enjoying that. So yeah, um, we were in school holidays. Easter was great. 
um, I ended up with two sick people. My husband and Iona ended up with severe ear infections that led to eardrum burst. In fact, Jeff's just gone back to the hospital to get checked out because he's been on antibiotics for like a week and a half and he's still in quite a bit of pain. So that could be a mixture of old age, stress, getting ready for seeding, always in dirt, like nothing major, just he shouldn't be like this. So we're getting it checked. He's in a bit of pain and it's not looking good. So um, yeah, I think that is it for life update. That was a bit awkward. So we're gonna get into stitching. So for the month of March, I did 6,423 stitches. That would be, <coughs> excuse me, like my best in ages. I worked on one, two, three, four, five, six, seven projects. One of them you won't, you've already seen in my last update, which was Autumn Queen. Um, and I have, I finished, I have finished a project. Yay. So I'm gonna show you that first. And I'm not even bothering to show you the before pick because what's the point? It's finished. So I finished on the 1st of April, Lady Rose by Joan Elliott, stitched on 32 count Belfast Sprite from Picture This Plus. <coughs> Excuse me. I didn't do all the French knots. There was a ridiculously amount of French knots and I just decided we weren't doing that. So it had like 200 beads, not a lot. The beading literally took me an hour and a half. I did 834 stitches in March to get all the stitching done. And on the 1st of April, I just or 2nd of April, maybe it was the 2nd of April. Um, I got it done. Looks fabulous. Um, half thinking at this stage, I'm gonna, we have a lady in town that's very good at um, sewing and I'm thinking of getting her to make this into a pillow for a, either Michaela's bed or um, give that to a friend. This, um, with the way the beading is, if you didn't want to bead, you could easily use metallics. Um, metallic for the little like kind of like flower type things in the ribbon. And then just down here, you're even using a white DMC or something if you didn't want to. Anyway, that is Lady Rose done. So glad I ended up doing the last lot of stitches on a Q snap, and that made a world of difference. I just got a kid in here getting food. If you hear crinkle, crinkle, and rummaging and then put it on back onto my um, quantum frame yes will and did the beading so that's that done and I'll be putting um, uh, another Joan Elliott in here in my special bag that a friend made me right I'm gonna pause. Right, I just had doors left open and kids walking around because school holidays. So, made sure doors were shut. All right, so I did pull out Inspirations, which is kept in my Eclectic Possessions bag. So, um, Inspirations by Rosewood Manor. This is stitched on the 
32 count gold digger old map by Colour Cascades, which is now closed. I did 542 full stitches and then a whole heap of back stitches, which I don't count. And this is what I'm going to stitch on instead of Lady Road, uh, instead of um, starting another Jordan Elliott stitch to finish, not starting, but bringing in another whip. Um, I want to finish across the top page before I put this fully away for the year. So this is where I'm up to. So hang on, I'll just have a quick look. I did. I did finish section four, which is basically page four. And I have a page and a bit to go and I've finished the top row. So it's only going to come out to about here. So what did I do? I did in here. Which is basically mirroring what's on this side. I do love it. It doesn't have a lot of colours. Um, it has less colours than what you'd think. But they work really well together. And what I have been doing is I've been doing the back stitch vines and then filling in the cross stitch around it to make placement easier. And then gone into a little bit, if necessary, in the page below because it doesn't overlap. I'm pretty sure it doesn't overlap. No, it doesn't overlap, which can be a little frustrating but I do love it and I love it on this fabric. But it is something that um, a page, which isn't very big, is like a 40, 40 by 60, I think, give or take. Um, and I'm ready to move on because it is a lot of stop start. Sometimes you can do a lot of stitches in one colour and other times it's a stitch here, a stitch there. It's a bit frustrating. So I would bring this out. I'm not sure if I'll get to this this month, but before I bring out um, Sleeping Beauty, um, Joan Elliott Sleeping Beauty to work as my main Joan Elliott for a finish, I will work on this until the top row is done. I think that would be a really good stopping point. And then... I pulled out A Perfect World and I did 1,339 stitches. She's kept in my stitch and button bag. It is a Scarlet House. And it says, in a perfect world, you would find me here with the birds and the flowers and the dogs and the deer. And hopefully, this is also going to be finished. This is stitched on 36 count ivory, which I got from 123 Stitch. And stitch in the cord for weeks and gentle arts. I did do two over two um, on the 36 count, and I'm glad I did with the black at the bottom. And I'll do the same when I start like the matching one, which I can't think. So here it is. I finished up in here and then I did the outlines of the flowers to make sure that next time when I pick this up, because there's still quite a lot of stitching there, but um, all in here is black and this is just like fill in colour as well so it's not going to be horrible but it does look so good can't wait it's not often I get two finishes anymore 
especially in the month. What a lonely year. Right, then I did 1,050 stitches on Outback Storm. And I will put in a picture of what Outback Storm looks like. It is kept in my bag that I got from Melanie. And I took it off the kiss net. I didn't realize that. This is stitched on 22 count hard hanger. And if you want my advice, don't stitch on 22 count hang danger. Some people might absolutely love it. I find that it's very slippery and your threads can slip under and look like you haven't stitched. Right, so we might as well give you, because it's probably been a while, a full look. Now, it came up in my memories that um, about three years ago, I stitched all along the bottom. So, and then I didn't stitch on it again, I think much at all for two years. So, that's it there widthwise, and then that's what I've done on the bottom. It does look really good at a distance um, when you're stitching it really close. So I did a thousand stitches just in here. I am in this tree and this tree is confetti heavy. It is literally one stitch here, one stitch there. You get nice bulk, nice stitches in the background and then you hit that tree. But it does look amazing from a distance. Now on the note of Full coverage I have decided to fully UFO magic study I have seen a lot of people stitching her and I'm not loving how it turns out and it's a personal preference um, Jessie Marie talked about it in her latest video so um, check out um, Jessie Marie's latest video I'll put um, her below and she's continuing on because she's enjoying the colors. She enjoys, um, she's seen enough of it where she likes the finished product or, you know, she where I'm not happy with how dull the colors are compared to the artwork. It is a preference. There is no right or wrong when you look at something and you go, I don't like that anymore or it's not what I expected. Um, but for me it just wasn't the bright colours and that purely could be because DMC doesn't have those bright colours so it's very hard to represent so I'm just going to put those colours into something else and um, focus on other full coverage because this is going to not take me a minute to finish let's be realistic we're coming up to 10 years um next year old so you know what am i gonna this is gonna keep me busy for a while reality speaking right in this stitch and button bag i have anzac and i stitched a thousand and two stitches on it anzac by long dog sampler and guys, I finally finished Australia, including Tasmania. There's a, not a joke, um, but the amount of times that map makers or people um, that did like promotional posters or doing something and they forget Tasmania. It's a thing. So, so we didn't forget Tasmania. Can't forget Tasmania. So hey, that is where we're up to. Oh, it looks so good. And the bit that I worked in. So yes, I done Australia, Tasmania, finished off the sheep, the back stitching, 
and what I realized was a pelican that looks like an evil smile so I finished off the page and then I moved up and started the next page finished off the lizard and the magpie and of course I was stitching this bit and I was like oh is this a a lyre bird or was it a bower bird because I couldn't remember on the top of my head who had the fancy tail feathers it was a lyre bird no that's just a fancy wave to go with the lighthouse it's a magpie I'm guessing a magpie with a frog in its mouth what I'm gonna do is um, here I'm gonna put a photo of one of our lizards that I came across. It's actually on our farm at the minute. It's having a grand old time. It's called a Bangara lizard and they can, this is quite small, but they can be, grow quite big. Um, Hubby said that he came across one years ago that was like two meters long and, you know, quite a few feet high. Um, they're a lizard, they're not gonna do, uh, well, they can hurt you. They're big enough that they can hurt you, but they tend not to, unless you aggravate it. But I'll put a photo here of um, one that we came across driving home. And um, we think it's the same one because we, where we saw it was quite close to our farm. And it's just hanging around, like it can hang around and eat the bad snake, or any snakes really, if it wants to, because I think they do eat snakes. Um, scare any other unwanted animals away. Managed to um, scare hubby quite a few times because you're always on the lookout for snakes and he hears a noise and he starts going, oh, what's that? Oh, it's just you, you lizard. Why? Why are you doing this to me? So. Then I stitched on Lady Rose and then I stitched on my monthly, in this stitching button bag, Stargazer by Mirabilia. So I did 731 stitches in March and then I did another 178 stitches in April for a grand total of 909 stitches I think that adds up to. So this is Mirabilia um, MD88. Do I have a little card in here? I do. It is stitched on 28 Lagana Opal Blue Moon by Calica Sades. Calica Sades no longer makes fabric. Here, so before. Oh, and that looks, I have to say all the fabric's been looking pretty close to how it is. So there it is. And it does look and I'm not gonna lie, like it's fading a bit, but it's not that bad. And once you get all the colors in, I think it's going to be fine. Where's that picture? Yeah, I think it will look fine. It's just that, because even at a distance, you can tell there's something on it. But yeah, I'm really happy. I worked in here um, across like I, how I like to do and then I worked a bit down in. For whatever reason, I always think I've done way more on this than I have. So this comes into plans. I have on my frame Autumn Queen. So I want to sit on Autumn Queen. I'd like to go for a finish on A Perfect World. Work on Anzac and Outback Storm. And if I have time, which I'm not going to push it, Inspirations, but that's uh, up there. Inspiration was my last, technically, my last three months. I have projects that I liked, that I've got, that I work on for three months and then I move on to the uh, next one to try the bigger projects or the projects I feel I just want to get more stitches on to, to try and get a finish. So I spun my decision app and it pulled up for my next three months 
in this melody bag. Day Nymph by Mirabilia. And it is stitched on 32 count, I can't pronounce that, Z E P H Y R U S by Under the Sea Fabrics. And it also has, this is our little bag from Stitch and Button, the um, Valdani hand dyed cotton flosses. Some of them are really easy to stitch with and they don't break and others shred and break very easily. It's quite a frustrating thread. It's actually not a big um, chart really. It is but it isn't. There is not a lot of threads in it. Oh, that is a really good indication of the fabric. Is that upside down? No, I don't think it is. Um, but I'm hoping, the last time I picked this up, I got about 500 stitches in and I was done because it kept shredding and breaking. But I'm hoping to get 3,000 stitches in this which would bring this along quite well that next year I'll bring this out possibly for another three monthly and get it finished. I do love it. Threads are kind of frustrating, but not all of them are that bad. It's just a couple that seem to be, you gotta do really short lengths, otherwise it shreds. Now I spun my decision app for my monthly extra and it's spun this one and I was working on it but it's always a but so it's spun moonflowers which I started as a stitch along with a group of friends and I started working on this and I was doing my working to the edge I think I was working over here to this edge over here I hadn't actually stitched a lot on it. It's on this fabric. And I realized when I counted out that I'm gonna have about an inch and a half border. This is one I will get framed and I wasn't comfortable with the inch and a half border. Um, and that's if I counted correctly and it's not actually an inch. This is on 28 count. If it, you stitch this on 32 count, a, quarter fabric will be plenty. On top of that, um, the chronic that has two spools of it is pretty much identical to my fabric. And my fabric is opalescent. opalescent. I think I've already got that word butchered. It's quite beady as well, which is why I wanted a 28 count so that the beads kind of fit better. And there's a couple of colors when I really looked at it that will blend in and they are a little bit on the edge and the beads. So I am going to restart this on a fat half, which like Lady Rose, well, I should have done that on a smaller fabric. Um, I'm gonna have a lot of leftover fabric, but I know myself, I don't wanna stitch on this because I am worried about on the sides. Top and bottom it fits fine. Um, but on the sides, I'm not happy. On top of that, this two spools of Kynic that will be like stitching white on white because it's basically sparkly on sparkly fabric. Um, and it's basically the same fabric color as the fabric. I'm not gonna enjoy that. So I think in December, I'm gonna allow myself cause um, I went looking um, at for something else for a fat half and fat half fabric in Australia is not cheap at the best of times. So I will just keep my eye out for maybe a sale or at some point closer to December, 
buy a fabric to restart this. And yes, it's gonna be ridiculously a lot of extra fabric, but I know I'm gonna stitch a lot more happier on it. And I want 28 count. If, if I had wanted to stitch on 32 count, it would fit fine. But I really, really, really want it on 28 count with all the beads and the amount of grouping of beads, just my preference. So, I spun my wheel again, and then this stitch and button bag, it spun the three things sampler, which is probably a good thing because I need to get some extra stitches on this. So, this is stitched on no information whatsoever. This would be um, 36 count, one over one. I think this is the one I did, one over one. I'm hoping I did one over one. Oh my goodness. I actually have no idea. Anyway, Belinda needs to really look into that and write it down. That is my start. So this will get a thousand stitches this month, which won't be a lot of progress, but it'll be something. And as soon as a free area is in my three monthly, this will go in there. I do love this. And I think this is 36 count. And I think I did do this one over one. I'm gonna to have to take a very close look at that. Because I can't, yeah. So that is my plans. And that's it, really. Um, yeah, that's, that's pretty much it. Um, we've got school holidays for another week and then we've hit into term two in Australia. Um, and then in May, May the 4th of all dates, um, our school is having their school ball. And because ours is a very small school, um, year seven to year 12 can go. So Michaela is going for the first time this year because she's in year seven. And this is Sophie's last year because she's in year 12. So um, being a bit busy, um, we went to our big girl, town yesterday I think it's technically glass is a country town city um, and we did some shoe shopping for the ball plus looking at jewelry for Sophie um, we've all got the dresses already I tend to start looking towards the end of the year um, sorry there's a fly in this house so that we can get stuff organized so next week, not next week, two weeks, we've got hair appointments to get our hair cut, so we'll be included. And then make sure we've got everything we need for the ball because the ball is in two weeks. And then um, the day of the ball, Sophie and I will be going up to that said town again to get nails done um, and do all that stuff, come back to our town. And then she's, and then her and McKay, she's getting her makeup fully done, her hair done. The makeup artist is doing Michaela's hair Iona, who's very good at doing her own makeup, is doing her own hair, and Michaela is doing Iona's hair by her choice. She was offered either. Um, so, yeah, just a lot happening. I am not expecting this to be a really big stitchy month, considering we're on day seven, and I've had already, I think, three to four snow stitching days, and then doing that little bit on moonflowers and not enjoying it, and you know, just what do I do? Do I restart it? Do I another restart so that's where we are with all of that I not this month am tossing up with the idea of coming back fortnightly just because I struggle to stitch at the beginning of the month if I haven't shown my projects and I've excuse me noticed that very much and I had no time between we had Easter, I was back at work, and we were really busy at work. 
and then yesterday I wasn't here like and I'm like oh, what do I stitch on what do I stitch on so I am tossing up with the idea of doing fortnightly probably won't happen this month because I honestly don't think I'm going to stitch enough to show anything but maybe with showing a bit of um, farm stories and I have brought this up before tossing up the idea of what to do and showing some work and um, at some point I will have some haul coming in because I brought stuff from marketplace from um, hunting bird stitchery and I've done a couple of orders through um, a stitch in time online and brick, it's a brick and mortar store in Tasmania um, so that, you know we'll see we'll see I'm not holding my breath anytime soon I say this and then I feel like I never have anything to show and I, my videos are already reasonably quick so what's the point but we'll see so all that to say <laughs> I hope everyone has a good stitching month I hope everyone is going okay um, I am so sorry for the floods that are happening over east again I and the, we just was it Taiwan had an earthquake and Everything else has been happening in the world I am so sorry um, it's freaking hilarious how parts of the world can get so much rain that it's to a scary point and homes and lives are getting destroyed and we're struggling to get anything and we're in the same country like how about we just even it out people even it out Happy stitching and I'll see you in a month. See ya.